I'm Jessica Stutzman and this is the Mill Creek Government Channel. Today we are joined by Ainsley Brozig, Executive Director of the Experience Children's Museum. Ainsley, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Well, just the Children's Museum is a gem. So I am so glad to have you back and talking about all the awesome, cool renovations you guys are doing. We did talk a lot about, you know, all the phases that have been rolling out. Um, how is construction coming along? Well, it's coming along good, slower than I had hoped, but doing great. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually set to open phase two in July, okay. which will mean that the entire project is completed. And we are so looking forward to that because we've been under construction for about two years. Mm -hmm. But you've been open. We've been open, yes. Okay, I know, because we did hold a birthday party and it was awesome, it was so successful. And I thought, I don't even know how how there we could expand yeah it's yeah it's just going to keep growing well the whole other side that's going to open is amazing mm -hmm. i mean if you thought the first side was great the second side is even better mm -hmm. um, the big highlight over there is it's really going to appeal to some older kids mm -hmm. um, you know your daughter is aging up yeah. and so we really want to appeal to those kids going through third fourth fifth grade mm -hmm. um, and so we had to get some exhibits that they will find super cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's also going to feature three classrooms, so we'll be able to do birthday parties, you know, two or three at a time, which is amazing and, and much needed for revenue. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about those exhibits. I know last time we talked about, you know, the water table, mm -hmm. and um, I know there was like um, an automotive station mm -hmm. and um, a farm station and a vet station and a little playhouse station. What are we going to expand into? So the new area, the, the entire second floor, which by the way is our old building, mm -hmm. right? It was the 100-year-old Boston store livery mm -hmm. that we completely transformed. So the building is still the same, but we gutted the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and so the whole entire second floor is going to be home to innovation and science and just amazing play. Mm -hmm. um, there is a ball play exhibit that is going to talk about recycling, I love which it. I know you love. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and how recycling starts at home. You know, how do you take a, a, a concept like recycling and make it fun though? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to add a million balls and mm -hmm. the kids are going to use balls to replicate items you recycle. Mm -hmm. And then probably some poor dad or grandpa is going to be standing under this giant bin that the balls fall down on. Oh. So um, super fun, very active. There's also a construction house um, where we're going to let kids use real tools, mm -hmm. uh, supervised by our staff, of mm -hmm. course, and their parents or caregiver. But it's that same old saying, you know, if you give somebody a fake hammer or a real hammer, the kids are always going to go for the real one. Mm -hmm. And so we really debated this back and forth and we thought, you know what, let's get kids interested in fixing things and learning how to use screwdrivers and hammers and whatnot. So that's up there. There's also my favorite area, which is the innovation tinkering tank. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna feature um, items that were created in Erie and allow kids to create something of their own. So we'll give them materials. And think of the show Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. It allows kids to create something and then they get to pitch their idea. So there's a, a camera and a TV screen, wow. and um, kids love to be on TV. So what we're hoping is that we're creating little inventors and giving them something you know, to ins uh, in be inspired to see, hey, there were things made in Erie, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. I love that. Kids do have the coolest ideas. They're so off the wall, you're like, if this actually, if somebody could make this work, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. But they, they are little inventors, and mm -hmm. that's so cool. Yeah, another area is um, a flight lab. Mm -hmm. So think of a giant batting cage, mm -hmm. and we're going to let kids uh, design rockets and airplanes and parachutes. And they, you know, the whole idea is try it, sketch it, text it try it out, and then if it doesn't work, try again. Um, and they'll be able to launch these into uh, this batting cage that has targets. Really? Um, and so that's gonna be fun. I think the dads are gonna like that as well, and the grandpas, because mm -hmm. it's just super cool. Who doesn't wanna launch a rocket? Yeah. Um, and then on the lower level, that's really focused on art. Um, and all kids love art. Yeah. So what the exhibit designers tell me, and you'll appreciate this as a mom, they say it has to be things they cannot do at home. Mm -hmm. 
it's the messier the better, mm -hmm. which stresses me out, but yeah. it'll be fun. And um, so that area is going to feature spin art yeah. um, with a bicycle. That's so cool. So you'll be able to drop paint into a bicycle, pedal it, and paint's going to go everywhere. And they'll get to take that home. Lots of messy, fun art will go on in that space. Um, and then, of course, our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And they need that creativity. I mean, mm -hmm. they, I feel like they need the creativity in other aspects of their life, in math and science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it all um, really does intertwine together. Yeah. That's also an area where I'm super excited to partner with the art museum and other um, collaborating teaching artists because that's a space where we can really introduce cultural art. Mm -hmm. There are, gosh, I think 10 or 12 different cultures in Erie. We're home to a lot of new Americans. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to work with those groups to bring in different art. So one day you might go in there and they'll learn about the art of henna mm -hmm. and kids could get a henna tattoo. Um, they might learn about cultural pottery um, and different things, basket weaving. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really important because, um, you know, we need to teach kids to be appreciative of all the art that is around the world. Mm -hmm. And so we're bringing a glimpse of that into the museum. Well, and some, you know, some art is really difficult to make, like mm -hmm. it's very time consuming or it's very tedious, you know, not, uh, not all art is simple. Right. And so I think it teaches patience as yeah. well. You're right. So. Yeah. And then the lower level um, is kind of an empty space for now. But what I'm super excited about is it's going to be a space where we can bring in traveling exhibits. So we have amazing partnerships with children's museums and science centers across the country. Um, and our very first one, we just got notification, we got funding, is going to be the science of baseball. Really? Because there is science behind baseball. Yes. Who knew, right? Um, and so it's a traveling exhibit that'll be in the lower level and it comes in the fall. Um, and it'll teach kids about uh, the speed of a pitch and how science is involved in that and batting averages and all of that stuff. And we're going to do some fun things with the Erie Sea Wolves. So we're really looking forward to that. Again, our whole motto is we're taking a concept like the science of baseball. We know baseball is fun and we're teaching them the science behind it. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited to bring that. Well, and I feel like when they leave that exhibit, maybe the next time they do go to a Sea Wolves game, maybe they'll be yeah. able to spill some information over yeah. to their parents right. too. Yeah, and you know, we love baseball and American pastime, but those guys that play, you know, that's that's a talent. Mm -hmm. And we, um, you know, want to encourage kids, hey, if you think you can make it in the big leagues, mm -hmm. you know, here's what you need to do. Here's mm -hmm. the science behind yeah. being an all-star pitcher. Yeah. Um, and we want to teach kids to dream big. You can do that. Yeah. And so this exhibit's going to be really, really cool, and we're excited to bring it to Erie. That's awesome. So tell me again, when is all this expected to be completed? So phase two will be completed in July. Um, our outdoor classroom space, which mm -hmm. is technically phase three, if you can follow all these mm -hmm. phases, that's actually going to open in May. Um, we're super excited about that. It'll be, once again, a certified outdoor classroom um, featuring 10 elements essential to nature play. Mm -hmm. So there's musical instruments, there is a reading space, there is a gardening space. We're actually going to put a beetle bug car out there and let kids paint it. Oh my gosh. So it's kind of like a community art piece. Mm -hmm. Again, we don't normally paint cars, so yeah. that's something cool kids will get to do. We stole that idea, I should say borrowed that idea from a children's museum in Denver. Um, and then there's going to be, we're actually gonna grow grapes on the side of the building. Um, fun fact, everything in that outdoor classroom is edible. Okay. So our motto is if your daughter wants to pick grapes and eat them, she can. Mm -hmm. If she wants to try an herb, she can do that. If she wants to pick you a bouquet of flowers, she can do that. Um, and so everything in there is safe for, for kids to do that. That's awesome. And I love the tactile experience. Um, and painting a car, mm -hmm. I, that is, I've never, I've never heard of that. And I think that's the neatest thing. People say I'm either going to create criminals oh. or <laughs> it's going to be a fun experience. But, you know, again, it's something that you don't do at home. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and it's what actually happens from what we've learned is the paint will actually disintegrate the car Oh, over time. So then we will yank it out and put a new one in. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, that's such a cool idea. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for bringing that all to <laughs> us. Um, and so you talked about the age of the building a little bit, but what is the age of the Experience Children's Museum itself? Yeah, that's a great question because our old museum really targeted the little kiddos. Mm -hmm. It was really, even eight was pushing it, mm -hmm. seven and under. Mm -hmm. um, and what we had heard from members of the community, educators, they said, look, we're outgrowing you at first grade. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's A, a really bad business model, and B, so sad, right? Mm -hmm. We wanna be able to keep kids engaged. So the exhibits in the Children's Museum will reach kids through fifth grade. Mm -hmm. um, and then the um, programmings, programs that we do in the classroom, uh, the summer camps, we'll actually approach middle school through that. So oh, wow. there's camps that go up to age 13. Mm -hmm. um, again, we know that middle school age, they're really starting to think about careers mm -hmm. um, and what their interests are. And so we want to help guide them into um, maybe making a STEAM or STEM career choice. Oh, and I love that so much. I mean, I think, um, I think most of the you know careers that my daughters toyed around with have all been in, in STEM, STEAM, mm -hmm. um, and what better way to foster yeah. all of that? And again, like you said, for a longer period of time. Yes. From the time they're babies and mm -hmm. infants and crawling and playing at the Children's Museum mm -hmm. to now middle school. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and one of our deciding factors was there is research that shows that by second grade, kids know if they like math or science. So if your child is like, I hate math or science, odds are they're not going to be successful or go into a career that focuses on math and science. And we need that. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every job has some sort of math or science. Mm -hmm. So we really want to change that narrative. We want kids to think math and science are cool mm -hmm. um, and break it down in a way they can understand and appreciate. So that's what we're really focused on. All of our exhibits meet PA state standards for, for teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so our educators make curriculum that can go right into the classroom, mm -hmm. um, which is super cool because they can help the school districts as well. Yeah, um, that's really awesome. I, I just, you know, you do so much um, innovative, so many innovative things. Where does your creativity come from for all of this? Well, I wish I could say it comes from me, but um, we borrow a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. We are a, a member of an association of children's museums, and I have great relationships with colleagues. And it's kind of like you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to spend a ton of money on an exhibit that I know maybe isn't fun or doesn't work. So we bounce a lot of ideas off of each other. Um, I visit a lot of museums. We also have hired a museum architect called JRA, mm -hmm. and they are well known. Um, they have built the Comedy Center in Jamestown, mm -hmm. all of the Crayola factory uh, experiences. They have built children's museums across the country and in China. Um, and so they're really the experts in knowing what kids need to play to learn. Mm -hmm. And so we really look to them for help as well. Yeah. So we talked a lot about the exhibits and, and how we're moving, uh, you know, even into the middle school ages. Is there any other kind of children's programming we didn't get to talk about yet? Well, you know, we do see kids as young as six months. So I think that's really important. People think, oh, my, my granddaughter, my grandson, my child is too young for the museum. We do baby classes and toddler classes and preschool classes um, for those little kiddos that maybe aren't ready for school yet. Um, and what we really find is that kids as young as six months old, you know, we do singing and story time and, and music and get them introduced to the experience. And it kind of becomes um, a support group for the parents, mm -hmm. which is really fun. We've seen parent groups come together and they get to know each other and they have playtime together and then those kids end up growing up with us. Mm -hmm. um, so children as young as six months, we have things for them. We have a special taught spot for them in the museum and special programming. So um, we really are trying to reach six months all the way up to age 13. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after 13, we're looking to them to volunteer or come and work for us. Yeah, of course. I'm sure they want to come back and volunteer. And, you know, it, the Children's Museum probably feels like home to them at that point. Yeah, we really serve as a first job for a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. So at age 15, we start to hire and we're teaching them to be productive citizens in the community. And so um, being a first job for them, it's fairly easy mm -hmm. and um, we can mold them and, and teach them what it takes to be in the workforce. Mm -hmm. I also find that, you know, like teenagers are like really good with the little kids. 
You know what I mean? You are 100% like they, right. They like, they still live in that in-between world mm -hmm. and they get it. Yeah. And sometimes the teenagers have more patience than the teachers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they are, exactly, we hire a ton of elementary education majors mm -hmm. from the colleges. Mm -hmm. It's great experience. But also those teens that maybe have babysat or have an interest in becoming a teacher someday. I always say to the group of interns that come in that are education majors, by the time you finish 12 weeks of summer camp with us, you're gonna know really quickly if you wanna be a teacher mm -hmm. in the future. It's a great non-traditional experience mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, I love that. And so this might lead me into my next question. Um, well, we kind of went on the employment end of it, but do you have summer camps um, coming up available for 2024? And how would parents you know, put their kids in summer camps or vice versa? How would you maybe be a camp counselor? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a lot of summer camps. They're on our website. They do fill up. I know there's a couple that are already sold out, um, but we have many opportunities, especially for that middle school age. Age. Mm -hmm. um, and they typically run 8.30 to 5 or 8.30 to 4.30. We try to accommodate the workday. Mm -hmm. For the littler kiddos, maybe age 4 to 6, we do half-day camps because they might not be ready to spend the entire day with us, and that's okay. Um, as far as the leads and the educators, we're always taking applications for that. They really don't need experience. Um, if you're a camp counselor, if you're a lead, you need a little bit of experience. Um, but we we see probably up to 500 kids in camp, so wow. we can use all the help we can get. And we also have a great teen volunteer program too. Mm -hmm. So if kids need service hours, um, they can go through our volunteer program, help at events, help in classes, and that kind of thing. Are the um, camps um, themed or anything like that? They are, yeah. And our educators have come up with some great themes. We do an art camp every year. Um, that's popular. We do one called Pet Vet, um, patterned mm -hmm. after our, our exhibit. Um, that one always sells out. Um, they do a cooking camp, which the kids love that as yeah. well. Um, they travel to some of the downtown businesses and learn um, all about what it takes. So they go to the sweet shop and learn from a baker wow. and, and fun things. Um, a new one we're doing is Steam Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, those are, That's for the older kids. Um, she's doing some um, intervention camps like Shark Tank where you'll get to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and so we try to think of different themes every year that are kind of unique but also match what we do at the museum. Well and everything you touched on I could see my daughter having an interest in every single one <laughs> well, so good. I was like which one do I pick? Good. Um, but you're spot on and you, you guys know that. Um, I know we only have a couple minutes left. Um, do you offer um, field trips to schools and the last thing I want to talk about is birthday parties. Sure. Yes, we do offer field trips. And um, usually the months of April, May, and June are full. Well, we'll see about 15,000 school kids mm -hmm. in that time. Um, and so what we do actually, for those of you at home, we do post on our website and social media, field trip alert, there's 250 kids coming today. You may want to come after 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, um, We try to give people a heads up. Um, but now the museum is so large that it doesn't feel as cramped when those mm -hmm. kids come. Yeah. So we're super excited. The school kids, um, for some of those kids, you know, we that's the only time they get to visit us. Mm -hmm. um, we also see kids as far away as Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, so we're super excited to have them come. And then birthday parties, you know, we are a perfect spot for a birthday party, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, and now with the addition of these classrooms, each classroom has its own kitchenette. Mm -hmm. which is super nice. Um, and so you can have our, a room to yourself with a little kitchen and then the kids can play and it can kind of be home based. They can come back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the informations on our website. They sell out extremely fast. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing is now we can do multiple ones at one time. Yeah. Um, birthday parties are a favorite of mine. They have always been wildly successful. And what's funny about the birthday parties is I'm usually moving the kiddos along. Like you haven't been to all the stations. Like go to the next one or yeah. else you're going to miss it. Well, wait till so. I tell you this. We just added for birthday parties, you'll have to tell your daughter, mm -hmm. glitter tattoos you can add on. Yes. And we're looking into a Build-A-Bear type stuffy 
machine I will love that that they can do that's a children's museum bear I love it so much <laughs> Ainsley thank you so much for being here today um, all of this is such great information and I just appreciate everything you do for our community oh thank you so much thanks for having me of course viewers again we really dove into the new expansion and construction at the children's museum but they are not closed while they go through this renovation so please feel free to bring your children bring your grandchildren come from out of town it is a wonderful experience and you won't be disappointed. So I want to thank you for tuning into the Mill Creek Government Channel and until next time have a great day.